Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 13th of September 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today. Now without wasting time, let us get into the news article discussion. Look at this article, it is about the recent Supreme Court judgment regarding Section 6A of the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. In our discussion, we shall analyze the outcome of this judgment and the background in detail. First, let us start with Section 6A. What does Section 6A say? This section was added to the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act in 2003. This section says that the CBI has to get prior permission before investigating senior government officials. This means that the CBI needs the sanction of the central government before investigating officers in the rank of Joint Secretary and above. Now what is the problem with this section? This provision under Section 6A is against the fundamental rights. It violates Article 14 of our Constitution that is the right to equality because it gives special privileges to senior government officials. So, this provision was struck down as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 2014 in the Subramanya Swami West Union of India case. The court held that there cannot be any distinction among public servants. But there was an issue with this judgment. It did not clarify what would happen to the existing cases that were being probed by the CBA. So, a constitution bench was created to examine whether the 2014 judgment would affect the corruption cases. And recently, the constitution bench of the Supreme Court declared that this judgment of 2014 can be applied retrospectively also. Here, retrospectively means the judgment is effective even before the time it is passed. That is, the judgment is applied even before 2014 in this case. This means that the CBI can investigate serious government officials without the prior approval of the central government even for cases that happened before 2014. So, this verdict will have a significant impact on corruption and other criminal cases initiated against government servants between 2003 and 2014. This will also strengthen the autonomy of CBI. In this context, let us see another case that is related to the issue of autonomy of CBI. This case was filed by Vinit Narain in 1997 under the Article 32 of our Constitution. It is about seeking proper investigation in a corruption scam. In this judgment, that is the Vinit Narain case judgment, the Supreme Court said that the CBI had failed in its responsibility to investigate allegations of public corruption. Now, what is the outcome of the Vinit Narain judgment? As a part of the Vinit Narain case judgment, the Supreme Court laid down guidelines to ensure the independence and autonomy of the Central Bureau of Investigation. It ordered that the CBI should be placed under the supervision of Central Vigilance Commission. The CVC is now responsible for ensuring that the investigation of corruption against public and government officials is done without the interference of the government. This is about the Vinit Narain case judgment. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about Section 6A of the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. Then we saw about the Subramanya Swami vs Union of India case judgment and the recent update regarding this judgment provided by the Supreme Court Constitutional Branch. And finally, we saw the guidelines issued by the Supreme Court in the Vinit Narain case of 1997. Now with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at the science page article. This article is about black holes. This article gives us a picture about how black holes are identified. So, in our discussion today, we will understand what is a black hole. Then, we will see about the formation of black hole. And finally, we will see how black holes are identified. Now, let's start with black holes. See, a black hole is not a literal hole. It is an extremely dense celestial body that has extremely intense gravity. For instance, one cubic centimeter of matter in a black hole weighs trillions of tons. In case of black holes, we use the term matter because we don't exactly know what the black hole is composed of. Now coming to another term, extreme intense gravity. The black hole is said to have extreme intense gravity. This means that the black hole has a very strong gravitational force. 
it is strong in the sense even the photons that is the light particles that travel at the speed of 3 lakh km per second cannot escape from the gravity of the black holes. This is why the black hole is said to have extremely intense gravity. So to sum it up, the black hole is nothing but a high density celestial body with intense gravity. Now how are black holes formed? See the black hole is formed due to the death of a massive star. Here a massive star is a star that has mass 8 times greater than the mass of our sun. As we all know the sun is classified as a star. Our sun emits energy due to nuclear reactions that happen in it. This is the same in case of massive stars also. So if any of the massive stars runs out of its fuel then the core of the star becomes unstable. As a result the star undergoes extreme gravitational collapse. Gravitational collapse lead to extreme compression resulting in supernova explosion. As a result of supernova explosion, the outer layer of the star is blown away and the left out object is very compact and dense. This is the object which is normally termed as black hole. Hope you understand the formation of black holes. Now we will see how black holes are identified by the astronomers. The black hole is identified by the gravitational force it exerts on nearby stars. See the astronomers have found that some visible stars in the universe orbit around a dark or unseen object. See if that unseen object happens to be a black hole, it will start pulling the matter that is present on the surface of the visible stars. This is due to the high gravitational pull exerted by the black hole. See the astronomers will observe the path of the matter of the visible star to decide whether it is a black hole or not. See if the matter starts falling towards the unseen object in a characteristic spiral path then they confirm that the unseen object is indeed a black hole. See during the movement towards the black hole the matter of the visible star also emits X-rays which can be detected from the earth. So based on these observations only black holes are identified by astronomers. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw what are black holes how black holes are formed and how they are identified from Earth. Now with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Take a look at this editorial article. The editorial article talks about the arrest of former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Chandra Babu Naidu. He was arrested in connection with the corruption in the skill development scam case. When we look at the evolution of this case, Mr. Naidu's name was named as a sprain suspect very recently only. But without any solid evidence, the state investigation agencies has carried out this high profile arrest. This raises the suspicion whether arrest is used as a political tool to persecute opposition leaders. So the author here says that the investigation agencies should not appear to serve the interest of the ruling party. If they do so, such action will contribute to public skepticism and undermine the trust in these institutions. This is about the article given here. In this context, let us understand what is probity, the importance of probity in public life and the steps that can be taken to ensure probity. The syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here. You can go through it. Before getting into the discussion, we must first understand the difference between honesty, integrity and probity. Honesty means being truthful and open. For example, a 7 year old boy set an example for his schoolmates by returning a big bag containing 50,000 rupees that he found abandoned on the roadside near his school in Eero district in Tamil Nadu. Here the little boy felt what is right and he went again with it. This is called honesty. Now moving on to integrity. Integrity implies a consistent behavior of being honest even when nobody notices. For example, a person taking responsibility of his own faults instead of passing it on others is a character of integrity. Now moving on to probity. Probity is being non-corrupt, fair and upright. In simple words, a complete and confirmed integrity is known as probity. Now having understood the difference between honesty, integrity and probity, we will see the importance of probity in public lives. See, probity preserves the public's faith in the government operations. This is because probity ensures that government actions and decisions are transparent 
and open to scrutiny. When the public can see that government processes are conducted with integrity, they are more likely to trust that their interests are being considered. Apart from this, probability guarantees that government operations are conducted fairly and without favoritism. This fairness is essential for citizens to believe that they are treated equally under the law and that opportunities are being fairly distributed. In this way, government can preserve the public's faith in the government operation. And this is the first reason why probity is important in public life. Okay. Secondly, probity helps in maintaining integrity in the public services. See, probity often begins with the establishment of clear code of conduct and ethical guidelines for public servants. Public servants are expected to stick to these codes and ensure that they act with integrity in their roles. Thirdly, since government operations are transparent due to probity, they indirectly encourage the public servants to be accountable to the people for their actions. Finally, probity in public life guarantees that protocols are followed. So, it seeks to avoid the potential for misconduct, fraud and corruption. These are some of the reasons why probity is important in public life. Now, we will see some of the measures that can be taken to ensure probity in public life. Firstly, to ensure probity, moral education is essential. It is important to give everyone ethical instruction that will motivate them to enhance the probity in governance. This will happen with moral instructions. Secondly, efforts must be taken to simplify the complaint filing mechanism in public institutions. This will make the government officials stick to the code of conduct and this will ensure probity in their public life. Thirdly, behavioral changes can be brought about in bureaucrats through training, performance appraisal and educating them about the values like empathy and compassion. Then political leaders can also set examples by adopting probity in their public life. For example, our former Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri paid the government when his sons used the official car. Like this, the present day politicians can also set examples by adopting probity in their public life so that the whole administration witness this and adopt probity in their public life also. This is the fourth step that can be taken to ensure probity in public life. Finally, e-governance can be improved by using information and communication technology. This will enhance the transparency in the operations of the government. Increased transparency equals to increased accountability and increased accountability will invariably result in increased probity in the government officials. These are some of the measures that can be taken to ensure probity in public life. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw what is probity, what is the difference between honesty, integrity and probity, why probity is important in public life and finally, we saw the steps that can be taken to ensure probity in public life. Now with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this article. Last Sunday, a music concert titled Markma Nenjam was held in Chennai. The concert was performed by music composer Mr. A.R. Rahman. Sadly, the concert ended with chaos. Many of the people who were present in the concert alleged that there was a stampede-like situation and molestation happening during the concert. The initial police inquiry found that the permission was given for only 25,000 people, but as many as 50,000 people have attended the concert. This was due to overselling of tickets by the event organizers. So, the event was overcrowded and there was a stampede-like situation. So, messages started circulating in the social media about poor crowd management in the concert. Later on, the event organizer had admitted that the problem was due to their mistake and they apologized to the people. So yesterday, the Tamil Nadu government had transferred the IPS officer, Ms. Deepa Satyan. She was the deputy commissioner of police under the Tambaram City Police Commissionerate. The venue of Mr. A.R. Rahman's music concert fell under the jurisdiction of Tambaram Commissionerate. So, she was transferred following the enquiry of mismanagement of crowd in the music concert. This is all about the news. In this discussion, let us understand some points about crowd disaster, then about the reasons for crowd disasters and the steps taken by the government to address the crowd disasters. 
before getting into the discussion i have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion you can go through it now let us start with the term crowd disasters the crowd disaster refers to the accident that occurs due to mismanagement of large crowd it is also referred to by many other names like stampede crowd crushes or crowd collapse see the crowd disaster mostly happen in areas where there is a chance of mass gathering for example crowd disaster may happen in shopping malls narrow shopping streets political or religious gatherings music concert and so on the crowd disaster often results in injury to many of the people or even death it also causes damage to public property having understood the basics about crowd disaster now let us see some of the examples of crowd disaster as we all know mecca in saudi arabia is famous for its annual hajj pilgrimage on 24th september 2015 during the hajj pilgrimage there was crowd crush near jammarat bridge the jammarat bridge is a pedestrian bridge which is situated few miles from mecca see during the pilgrimage the people used to throw pebbles at the jamra pillar by standing at the jammarat bridge this stoning ritual is part of the hajj pilgrimage so on 24th september 2015 a large crowd gathered at confined spaces due to lack of precise scheduling as a result nearly 2400 people have died due to crush or suffocation this is one of the major religious crowd disaster in the history of the world then recently on october 29 2022 at least 150 people had died in seoul south korea they died due to stampede like condition on 29th october 2022 a large crowd had gathered in the narrow streets of seoul during the halloween festival celebration as it is a narrow street many of the people had been pushed forward by a crowd this resulted in death of around 150 people and in addition to this many people were injured now coming to the examples of crowd disasters in india last year on january 1 2022 a crowd crush happened in mata vishnu devi shrine in jammu and kashmir the crowd crush was triggered due to heavy rush of devotees into the temple as a result of this around 12 people had died and some others were injured and recently on october 30 2022 a suspension bridge near morbi district of gujarat collapsed due to overcrowding on the bridge nearly 135 people have died and several others have been injured these are some examples of crowd disasters in recent times now moving forward we will see the reasons for crowd disasters the first and foremost reason is unorganized crowd or poor crowd control see normally the crowd reacts aggressively during emergency situation for example let us assume that a large crowd has gathered in open ground for political gathering and suddenly heavy rain starts in this situation what will the crowd do the crowd will rush to a place to avoid being wet right here the crowd won't look for any consequences during any emergency situation so during crowd rush some may get crushed or suffocated to death see the reason for such crowd disaster is unorganized crowd or poor crowd management the second main reason for crowd disaster is over capacity for example let us assume a meeting at a particular conference hall the hall has a capacity to accommodate some 1000 people but during the meeting around 2000 people entered the hall here the capacity of the conference hall has been breached right this leads to overcrowding and it may result in stampede like situation so over capacity is another reason for crowd disaster the third main reason is the occurrence of natural disasters during the events of disasters like flood tsunami or earthquake the crowd will rush towards the safer place to save their lives this might result in crowd crush or crowd collapse the fourth reason is poor construction planning for example let us assume that a huge commercial building was constructed with only one entry and one exit way and let us say the building accommodates many software companies with thousands of employees see when there is a emergency situation people will rush towards the exit door and as there is only one way out the crowd pushes the people in order to exit the compound and this results in stampede like situation these are some of the reasons for crowd disasters 
having seen the reasons now let us see steps that can be taken to address this issue firstly the government officials before granting any permission for crowd gathering they should ensure that the infrastructure such as road open spaces entrance and exit are suitable for a mass gathering this will help them control the crowd apart from this the government should also enforce a strict vigilant mechanism to look into the breaches of crowd capacity during the event secondly the event organizers should formulate a practical crowd management plan before conducting the event and the plan should include necessary components like crowd monitoring scheduling and crowd control the government officials can also review the plan of the event managers before giving the permission for the event this will help in proper crowd management in addition to this the event organizers should also have proper contingency and emergency plan in order to manage the crowd if anything goes wrong it is just like a precautionary measure this will also ensure crowd management during emergency times thirdly modern technology can be used for example a computer simulation of crowds can be carried out before the gathering to test the suitability of the venue this will give a overall idea about crowd management and crowd control and finally the government should ensure that the building or the commercial halls are able to handle emergency situation the unsuited building should be renovated to handle the emergency situation these are some of the steps that can be taken to control or address the issue of crowd disasters now finally let us see some of the steps taken by the government to address crowd disasters in india the national disaster management authority is responsible apart from this the state government also have various bodies to avoid crowd disasters see the national disaster management authority has issued a guidelines to stop the occurrence of crowd disasters now let us see some of the important points from the ndma issued guidelines on addressing crowd disasters firstly the guidelines mandates the police officials to regulate traffic in the area surrounding the event space in addition to this the ndma also mentions to establish emergency exit routes at strategic points of the event spot secondly the guideline mandates the event organizers to install cctv cameras in the event spot this will help in monitoring of the moving crowd apart from this it will help to probe any mishaps that happened during the event like the molestation that happened during the air ramen concert thirdly the ndma through the guidelines mandates the employment of ambulances and medical professionals in the event spot to handle medical emergencies fourthly the guideline advises the event organizers to provide instruction to the people attending the event in handling emergency situation these are some of the important points mentioned in the ndma guidelines to address crowd disasters so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw what is a crowd disasters the reasons for the occurrence of crowd disasters steps that can be taken to address crowd disasters and finally the ndma guidelines regarding crowd disasters now with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article take a look at this news article it talks about two deaths reported from kerala due to the nipah virus union health minister stated that two more cases have been confirmed in the state and a central team of four members have been deputed to assist the kerala state as the scariness of nifa engulfs kerala we shall look about the disease from exam perspective because we can expect a question regarding this disease in the upcoming prelims examination okay first of all what is nifa virus nifa is a zoonotic disease like the covid-19 that is it can transmit from animals to humans it can also spread through contaminated food in addition to this human to human transmission is also possible if the people are in close contact with the infected person nifa virus spreads through fruit bats or flying foxes the virus is present in the bat urine bat saliva and bat excrement see the incubation period of nifa is generally between 4 to 14 days but in some cases as long as 45 days are reported here incubation period is the period between the infection and the onset of symptoms now what are the symptoms associated with the nifa virus fever swelling of the brain that is the encephalitis headaches breathing difficulties vomiting cough and diarrhea are some of the common symptoms 
in extreme cases it may lead to disorientation and seizure in some cases nifa can be asymptomatic as well that is even though a person is infected with the virus he might not show any symptoms that is asymptomatic see the long term side effects of nifa include convulsions and personality change these are some of the symptoms associated with the disease here you have to know that pigs infected with the disease die in mass so nifa virus can economically hurt the people also okay now what about the mortality in humans unlike covid 19 which spreads very rapidly nifa spreads slowly but unfortunately the mortality associated with nifa is very high compared to the covid 19 See during the 2018 Nifa outbreak in Kerala 17 out of 18 infected people died but fortunately the outbreak can be controlled due to two factors the first one is that the virus is not very infectious the second one is that human to human transmission is not very easy so even though the virus is very deadly its spread can be easily contained okay Finally let us look at the treatment available for Nifa virus disease. So far no vaccine have been developed to treat the Nifa virus. Okay the only possible way is to treat the symptoms caused by the infection. Taking rest and taking proper hydration helps in reducing the symptoms associated with the infection. Okay that is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw some of the important points associated with Nifa virus infection that can be asked in the prelims examination. Now with this let us conclude this and take up the next news article. Take a look at this article. It is about the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita Bill 2023. This bill is going to replace the Indian Penal Code 1860. The BNS bill introduces new categories of offenses like cyber crime, terrorism, hate crimes, honor killing, mob lynching etc. It also offers special provisions for protecting women, children, senior citizens and other vulnerable sections of the society. In our discussion today, we will see some of the important changes brought by this bill. We will also see some of the pros and cons associated with those changes. This is the plan for today. Before getting into the discussion, I have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion. You can go through it. Now let's start. Before we discuss the BNS bill, we need to first know what is indian penal code the ipc is the principal criminal code of india it defines crimes and provides punishments for all kinds of crimes the bns will replace this ipc and put a new code in place of it while the ipc has 511 sections the bns contains only 356 provisions now we will see some of the important changes proposed by the bill first is regarding sedition the ipc currently defines sedition as an act that brings or attempts to bring hatred or contempt or excites disaffection towards the government according to ipc sedition is punishable with imprisonment up to 3 years or life imprisonment the bns bill removes the offense of sedition from ipc instead of sedition the bill introduces new offenses the first one is exciting or attempting to excite secession armed rebellion or subversive activities the second one is encouraging feelings of separatist activities and the last one is endangering sovereignty unity and integrity of india see these offenses will be punishable with imprisonment up to 7 years or life imprisonment this is the first change the second one is regarding terrorism For the first time the BNS bill introduces a comprehensive definition of terrorism. It defines a terrorist as an individual who commits act within India or abroad to threaten national unity, integrity, security or to intimidate public or disturb public order. So this is the second major change. The third important change is regarding defamation. The BNS bill redefines the offense of defamation and it also alters the penalties for it under the bns bill the defamation will be punished by imprisonment up to 2 years or community service the fourth major change is about organized crime the bns bill gives a proper definition of organized crime attempting or committing organized crime will be punishable with death sentence or life imprisonment when organized crime results in death of any person 
it is punishable by death sentence or life imprisonment and in other cases it is punishable by imprisonment up to 5 years the fifth major change is about mob lynching for the first time capital punishment has been introduced for the offense of mob lynching in addition to this the mob lynching is also made punishable with 7 years of imprisonment or life imprisonment these are some of the important changes brought about by the bns bill now we will see some of the important advantages or pros associated with the bns bill the first advantage is regarding sedition the bns bill will replace the darkonian sedition law under section 124a of the ipc section 124a of ipc is criticized for being misused against dissenters and critics of the government so it is the right move by the government to remove sedition under the bns bill the second advantage is regarding the definition of terrorism as we saw earlier the bill defines terrorism it provides clarity and precision in identifying and addressing the act of terrorism the third advantage is regarding the community service the bns bill gives community service as a punishment for petty offenses so the community service will be part of the penal code of india for the first time this is similar to the us system where community service punishment is given for offenses like vandalism petty theft and drunk driving the third major advantage is regarding the punishment for defamation the punishment for defamation is reduced and it also included community service as a punishment this is seen as a good move because this will retain the dignity and at the same time provide punishment for the offenders the next one is regarding women the bns bill has many provisions that empower women for example sexual exploitation of women on the promise of marriage job promotion or concealing identity will be considered a crime under the bns bill ipc allows death penalty for gang rape of women below 12 years of age but the bill allows death penalty in the same case for women below 18 years of age so it will act as a deterrence against gang rape the bill also omit the provision of offense of adultery this is in line with the supreme court ruling in 2018 which decriminalized adultery the next one is the bns bill will make some of the sexual offenses gender neutral this is done by including men and transgenders as potential victims and offenders in addition to women see these are some of the advantages or pros associated with the changes brought by the bns bill but the bns bill is not without its fair share of flaws so now let us see some of the issues with the bill the first important criticism about the bill is that the bill was drafted without the proper consultation and transparency see the bill was actually drafted by the criminal law reforms committee which is created in 2020 this committee doesn't have any representation from the judiciary the bar council or the civil societies this is the major criticism against the bill the next criticism against the bill is that it uses vague language see the bill uses vague and broad terms that could affect the human rights of the accused victims witnesses and the other stakeholders this is the second criticism leveled against the bill the third criticism is regarding sedition see although this bill removes the offense of sedition it also introduces other provisions which are a renamed version of sedition for example the bill introduces a new offense called acts endangering sovereignty unity and integrity of india this new offense is similar to the old sedition offense that was removed from the ipc so this new offense could potentially be used to suppress freedom of speech and dissent in our country the next criticism is inconsistency see many provisions in the bill are inconsistent and contradictory with each other some provisions are also contradictory with the existing laws this has led to lack of coherence between various laws and the last major criticism is that the bns bill did not take steps to criminalize marital rape this endangers the married women's right to self dignity these are some of the issues or criticism against the bns bill in conclusion we can say that the government must initiate a broader consultation process that involve all stakeholders including the general public before making changes to the ipc 
so that they can accommodate diverse perspective before implementing any reforms in the criminal justice system. So that's all regarding this discussion. See, this is an important discussion because we can expect a question in next year's mains examination, particularly in GS paper 2, regarding the changes made by the BNS bill. We can expect a question asking us to critically comment about the changes. See, in our discussion, today we covered the pros and cons regarding the changes. These points that we discussed can be easily used in the answer in which we are expected to critically comment about the changes. Okay? This is why this discussion is very important. Now with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this editorial article. Recently, Union Home Minister visited Haraminallah on the India-Pakistan border and inspected the developments taking place there. It is based on this context only the editorial here is written. So, in our discussion today, let us focus on the location and the significance of Haraminallah. Before getting into the discussion, let us be aware of the fact that through this Haraminallah only Ajmal Kesab, one of the terrorists who attacked Mumbai, entered India. With this introduction, let us start the discussion. First, let us cover the basics. Haraminallah is a 22 km long tidal channel located in the Kutch region of Gujarat. A portion of Rajasthan's Barma district also touches the area. It forms the border between the Sindhu province of Pakistan and the Ran of Kutch region of India. It is a part of the 96 km disputed site of Sir Creek. A little geographical background is that Sir Creek is one of the six main creeks in the Ran of Kutch region. The other important creek in this region is the Vivanwari Creek which enters Pakistan in the north, turns left and re-enters India where it is called Haraminallah. Having covered the basics, now let us see the significance of this place. Firstly, this place is of strategic importance. Haraminallah literally means rogue and treacherous channel. This is because this is the entry point of infiltrators, criminals and terrorists into our country. Due to its strategic importance, government has set up a 9.5 meter tall observation post tower. In addition to this, government has also procured all-terrain vehicles from Italy for its effective surveillance. The second important significance is that this area is a haven for prawn and fish catching. In Haraminallah, the sea water mixes with the fresh water from Sindh river. This makes the region a good breeding ground for fish and prawn. These are the two important significance of the Haraminallah. With this, let us conclude this discussion. In this discussion, we saw the location of Haraminallah and the significance of Haraminallah. Now with this, we have come to the end of the news article discussion session. Now let us take up the practice prelims questions. We have four practice prelims questions today. Let us see them one by one. Let us take up the first question. Which of the following government bodies provide oversight and control over the Central Bureau of Investigation to ensure its autonomy and independence? From our discussion, we know that the correct answer is option C, Central Vigilance Commission. Okay, moving on to the next question. Here four statements are given. We have to find which among the statements are not correct regarding black holes. Let us take up the first statement. It is an extremely dense object in space that is formed due to a death of a massive star. This statement is correct. Moving on to the second statement. It has extremely intense gravity which is so strong that even light cannot escape from it. This statement is also correct. Moving on to the last statement, the black holes can be detected using gravitational waves. This statement is also correct. Now moving on to the third statement. India does not have any space mission to study black holes. This is actually incorrect. India is having the AstroSat mission. The AstroSat mission is the first dedicated Indian astronomy mission which is aimed at studying the celestial sources including black holes. Last year, on May 2022, AstroSat has witnessed the birth of black holes for the 500th time. Apart from the AstroSat, India is also planning to launch the NASA ISRO SAR, that is the NISAR satellite. It is a collaboration project between NASA and ISRO. It is a dedicated mission to study the cosmic X-ray sources. This mission helps in the in-depth investigation of neutron stars and black hole sources. 
So, India already has a AstroSat mission that is fully dedicated to astronomy and in the future India is also planning to launch the NISAR satellite, okay, which will be a dedicated astronomy satellite. So, the incorrect statement here is option C. Since they are asking for the incorrect statement, the correct answer is option C. Moving on to the next question. Here three statements about the Nipah virus infection is given. We have to find how many of the statements given here are correct. Let us take up the first statement. It is a zoonotic disease which spreads through contact but not through contaminated food. The first statement is incorrect because Nipah is a zoonotic disease which spreads through contact with infected person and it also spreads through contaminated food. So statement one is incorrect. Moving on to the second statement, the organism causing the Nipah virus infection is a RNA virus from the family Pyrimoxiviridae, which is closely related to the Hendra virus. This statement is correct. Moving on to the third statement, like the COVID, Nipah's transmission and mortality rate is very high. This statement is incorrect because the transmission rate of Nipah is low, but the mortality rate of Nipah is very high. Okay. Here statement 1 and statement 3 are incorrect and only statement 2 is correct. Since they are asking us to find how many statements are correct, the correct answer here is option A, only one. Now moving on to the last question. Recently the places Haraminala and Bondo Dora seen in news. Which are? The correct answer here is option B. The disputed sites of India and Pakistan. The main questions based on today's discussion are displayed here. Interested aspirants can write the answers and post it in the comment section. If you like today's video, like, comment and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding UPSC preparation, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.